Welcome to the stream. We're about to get started, so get comfortable. We've got a lot of people in chat right now. Please say hello. What's your name and where are you from? Hello, Josiah. Hello, Nicole. Hello, Steven. Hello, everyone. We just need another moment and we'll be getting started. people here. All right, looks like we are about ready to get started. Welcome everyone to Virtual Capstone Night Games Showcase. We've got a lot to show you tonight and we're just going to jump right into it. Uh, we'll start off with some words from uh, Professor G.J. Lee, coordinator of the Game Dev program. Hi everyone, uh, hello and welcome to our virtual capstone showcase uh, presented by the Creative Arts and Technology Division of Bloomfield College. Uh, we're here to celebrate our class of 2020 um, and as always be mindful um, of your behavior in chat and amongst each other. We are here to celebrate, be kind and uplift one another. Uh, my name is GJ. As mentioned, I am a faculty member and game dev program coordinator. In addition to game design and game programming, uh, the cat, cat division includes animation, music tech, graphic design, expanded media, interactive multimedia concentrations. So if you're in any of those concentrations, uh, please let us know in chat. Love to welcome you as well. And so a little bit about the program and the capstone class itself. Capstone night normally is a public showcase that brings everyone and CAT together. Tonight's stream is an extension of the community-focused philosophy of our program uh, in light of COVID-19. Some examples of how we express that community-focused philosophy is that we have a game dev club where students themselves become community leaders. And I believe we have a few game dev club members in chat right now. So if you are part of the game dev club, uh, please let us know. Um, and uh, also, uh, as part of our community-focused philosophy, our program has organized field trips um, because it broadens uh, our students' experience by going outside the bubble that you know college can be. And our students eventually take initiative and go out to industry events on their own. I believe some of our own Capstone students have gone out to the city um, before this whole pandemic began and showcased their games um, at uh, major uh, game events, uh, especially one at Microsoft. Uh, we bring experts into the classroom to share their perspectives and experiences um, as well uh, as we have a strong faculty community. Uh, these faculty members uh, are some of the smartest and most dedicated people I know. Um, they teach and guide our students, but also challenge and inspire them. And so we're very grateful for our current professors, uh, Blake Andrews, Rob Canciello, Dennis Carr, uh, Brian Chung, Chris Pilati, uh, Tom Toynton, and Elisa Menez. Um, hope, I hope there are some professors in chat right now. If you're there, please let us know. Um, hello and welcome to you all. We'd also like to remember uh, one professor in particular. Our class faced the uh, untimely passing of Professor Jose Zambrano late last year. 
Jose was a prime example of our teaching philosophy, and he would be very proud of you all. Um, and so I like to, to acknowledge and remember if we can get some flowers in chat and a moment of silence and remembrance uh, of Jose. Thanks everyone. Um, and so this capstone cohort we're celebrating today has gone through many challenges, uh, but we're all here to see what they've accomplished. Um, and to kind of preface that, uh, what is capstone as a class itself? Um, capstone is a two semester long project where students start with a prototype and then as a team or solo developer, they handle every aspect of game creation where we're referring to the design, the programming, the art, the sound, the testing, um, the iteration, right? Uh, the constant iteration of our projects. Um, so our students are managing a project from beginning to end. As a class, we do this uh, alongside development. Uh, we also do a lot of research. They look up comparables. They're looking at the current market and looking back into games history and the history of other art forms. Uh, then comes the task of building an online presence um, as they work towards a public release. Our students manage their social media accounts, uh, research how to distribute games, and begin building their own community and personal brand. All this culminates in tonight's stream, but in a way, this is just the beginning. Um, so again, thank you all for being here. Uh, so to start our live stream, let's see some ones or hand claps in chat for Professor Brian Chung, who will be leading the stream and has been such an important part of our Bloomfield community. Thank you, hello. My name is Brian Chung. I'm an adjunct faculty at Bloomfield College and I have been working with Capstone students for the second half of the semester. What we'll be doing tonight, uh, I'll be playing through games and helping interview the developers this is tonight a coordinated effort of over 20 developers from over 20 different locations. So bear with us. Uh, this is the first time we're doing this. It's a little bit ad hoc, but just like game development, that's how we do it. Um, we make it work somehow. So what we've got tonight are all kinds of games spanning many different genres. Um, check out the capstone booklet, which we'll share a link to in the chat if it's not posted already, but we'll be posting that where you'll be able to see a bunch of artist statements from the developers themselves, uh, a little bit more in depth about how or why they made what they made. So tonight is a celebration. We want to see an active chat. Go on and cheer on your friends and family. Ask questions at any time. Anytime they pop up, you're seeing something on the screen, you have a question, um, just post it in the chat. Our moderators will see to it that, uh, that it gets asked and answered on the stream. So um, let's see, without further ado, our first project that we'll be looking at is Hitbox. Um, Let's see, Zamir, are you here in the chat? Zamir is joining the call right now. Uh, yes, I am here, Brian. Hey, say hello to everyone, Zamir. Uh, hey, everyone. Glad you're all to be here. Cool. I'm going to fire up first the trailer. We'll watch that together, and then we'll, uh, we'll play the game together, too. Sounds like a good idea, Brian. up the game. 
tell us a little bit more about what we just saw. Uh, yeah, um, Hickbox is a two-player cat fighting game with simple controls where the landing of a single hit determines the round. Uh, all cats in Hitbox have the same movement and fighting attacks. So there's only two directional inputs, left and right, for movement and two buttons to attack. Uh, there's no jumping nor special moves in this game. Cool. Let's see here. All right, we got the game on the screen. And so we're in here selecting our stage. And now we're selecting uh, what cat we're going to fight with. Press up to confirm. We are ready. So before we jump into it, we're going to go over the controls. Simple controls, right? We have a mm -hmm. high attack, a low attack. But if you hold down the button, there's sort of a long range high attack and a long range low attack. So you've already learned the game. Now we can just get right into... Oh, wow. Okay. Get me while I'm explaining the game, all right. Uh, okay. So this is super, super fast paced and we see the, the round count in the top left and the top right. This is a best, uh, best three of five to win. And uh, tell us a little bit more about, I guess, why you made this game. Why do you want to make a fighting game? Uh, which is usually associated with really complex movesets and stuff. Why do you want to make it really simple and fast-paced like this? Uh, um, the main inspiration of this game is for the casual audience to enjoy fighting games without having to worry about mechanics and certain inputs for moves. Although it's a casual game, it teaches them uh, one of the fundamental skills of fighting games. This game demonstrates uh, players the importance of maintaining their space before attacking, other known, as known as footsie. As a competitive uh, camp competitive fighting game player myself. My friends uh, enjoy watching me face off against opponents in tournaments. Although my friends enjoy spectating me, they also want to be a part of the action, but feel that the learning curve is a little bit too much for them. So I decided to create this game where any uh, skill over player can have fun. Cool, and I can see that we're getting a little closer to sort of reading each other's movements right it's getting to know getting to know the other players so it's really got some of what fighting games have have to offer but just a really fast entry into that spacing and that footsies yes and now uh is this game available can people download uh, yes, it yes uh yeah the game is available on itch uh it's for free cool and the only platforms available for it's on Windows, uh, Linux, and Mac. Got it. Well, congratulations. Um, let's see. Okay. What was that? One one. All right. I'm afraid I uh, I lost there. So <laughs> I will get you back next time. That was my uh, friend from uh, who lives in my building. They're here for the stream just to help out we'll play that two-player game. But now they are off. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Zamir. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, thank your friend for me as well for playing my game. Sure. Uh, we'll, I we'll hope we'll everybody... We'll playing later. We'll get that run back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed watching my game. And hopefully you folks can check it out yourself sometime. A uh, special shout out to these two people watching the stream, uh, Tanya Isabel and Tracy G. Thanks again, everyone. Hope you folks enjoyed the other games we have for the showcase and have a great night. Thanks so much. Nice work and congratulations. Thank you, Brian. Brett's in here. Thank you, GJ. All right, next up, we've got a game called Peter Man. Um, joining us on the call, we have, do we have Armand and Mayan? If you're there, go ahead and say hello. Hello. Hello and welcome. Awesome. So we're going to start it off by showing the trailer, and then I'm going to mm -hmm. jump in the game. So here we go.
so I'm loading up the game right now um, while it loads. You want to tell us just a quick pitch of uh, what the game is? All right. Uh, Big Man is a action platforming uh, shooter which follows uh, a boy named Peter. Very obvious. Um, <clears throat> and he usually gets himself into situations that should really best be handled by a professional. All right, so I'm in here now. Now, when designing the character, we really wanted it to be like he appeared to be like sort of incompetent, so that way it would get the idea across that he doesn't exactly belong in these types of situations. Cool. Yeah, you can definitely see the, the thought put into the, the character and their animations. It's kind of like not so superhero-ness of the superhero. Um, it's subtle, but it adds a lot to the, the personality of the of Peter. No, um... The main, like, only ability that Peter himself has is just having slightly higher at the average reflexes, which allows him to look at the... Uh, to look at everything uh, at a slower pace, and allowing more time to think. And so to do that, we press... Uh... And uh, this one ability actually did cause a lot of problems when uh, trying to do, like, level design, because we had to make sure that it was actually a challenge and that this ability didn't exactly take away from that. Speaking of low level design, that went through a lot of iterating, right? Can you tell us a little bit about it? On my last hit here. This definitely takes a lot of inspiration from some retro games, uh, quote unquote Nintendo hard from back in the day. Uh, but it's a good thing we have infinite lives here, because we are going to be grinding this a little bit until we get it just right. Memorizing these patterns, every enemy clearly has a different attack pattern, which I think I'm getting the hang of now. Uh, it definitely calls to mind some of the old school Mega Man games. Was that uh, a major inspiration here? Still on the call. Looks like we might have a disconnect, but that's okay. Because I'm gonna get through this. That explosion animation. that are shooting after Peter. <laughs> oh, I, no. sh <laughs> I should really be using this bullet time ability more. Oops, I kind of rushed through that. Oh. I'm sorry, what? Oh, Armand, we wanted uh, to ask you a quick question about the level design and uh, and the inspiration of the game. I'm sorry, I think something's happened to my audio. I can't exactly hear. Armand, are you there? I can hear you now. Cool. Um, so, uh, going back to our, our question about level design and your inspirations for Peter Man. Oh, yeah. Um, main inspirations were games that were in the, well, basically the genre of bullet hell overall. Because it seemed like it sort of fit with providing a challenge <clears throat> and combining numerous different types of enemy. Definitely getting the hang of it. Uh, <laughs> as for uh, 
as for like uh, games that we uh, took inspiration from, it mainly came from games like maybe Axiom Verge to get ideas for like different types of like shots that can be made. And uh, mainly, I guess overall, it does appear like Mega Man, but main inspiration kind of was from uh, other games that were. Uh, Smaller, but also had fluid movement. Mm -hmm. Which was the uh... <coughs> now that movement is precise in this game. I don't know if you you can tell on the stream, but you can um, you can actually fast fall to carefully modulate your jumps. Um, you can see that we're angling our shots. I noticed actually there's a nice. Oops. <laughs> I uh, lost my concentration for a second there, but I, I'll just show off this nice touch that I saw, which is um, if you run off of a platform, there's still a moment where you can actually um, jump. So it's actually, even though it's a super precise platformer, there's a bit of forgiveness there, and that's a that's a really good design trick. Um, it's actually known in some circles as a coyote jump, named after uh, Wile E. Coyote, where you can run off the ledge and still jump. Um, so I, I think that's a really good touch there to make the game, make sure the game always feels good and precise. But um, this game now is available, is it available for free as a downloadable demo? Uh, yes, it is on the Twitch uh, page. So at my next death here, I will spare everyone from watching me fail again. I should really be using this this slow down this time slowdown feature. Oops. Well, everybody at home, you can be trying it, and maybe you can do better. Um, but thanks for showing us the game. It's definitely fun. I'll be playing it more later. Try to beat it. I played it. I I got to the third level boss when I played it before. So I'll be uh I'll definitely be giving that another month. <laughs> Let's see, next up... Come on. Thanks, Mayan. Thank you. Next up, we've got a trailer for Azza that we're going to show. And I'm going to hit it. What a trailer. Are you here on the call, Charles? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, just Hi, uh, introduce Hi. yourself and tell us a little bit about your game while it loads up. All right, um, two seconds. OK. Hi, I'm Charles Cunningham, everybody. Um, Azza, right. Azza is an action adventure game based on based off of an anime that I wrote. So it's like an anime disguised as a game, technically, if that makes sense. Oh. Um, it does make yeah. sense. <laughs> it does. <laughs> um, a little dis short disclaimer for everybody watching. The game did not come out on May 1st. It comes out next month. We're getting a short delay for some quality enhancements. Um, yeah. <laughs> But the demo is out? The demo is out. As of today, the demo is live. Perfect. So let's see. We've got our character here. Um, got a jump. Got a sword swing. Let's see. Let's talk to this friendly fellow named Death. <laughs> okay. So we're looking for friendly. Azza. 
yeah. Mm, I don't want to give up the story plot, but like, it's like the game explains itself in a way that's not, not um, all at once in the beginning, but you find out as you go into the game because you can't hear Zen's thoughts and Zen doesn't talk for himself. Mm -hmm. Other people talk and then that reflect what he says or his um, thoughts. Got it. And, and Zen is who I'm playing as right now. Yes. Cool. So let's see, here's the first few enemies. The tutorial enemy. They don't do damage. Oh, okay. But they, um, it's so the player, this is like the, t the tutorial area where the player learns how to play, gets a feel for the movement and the basic um, concept of attacking and defending. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying I can lock on to my, I can freely move around or I can lock on to my target by holding down L1. Uh, yeah. Kind of like some of the 3D Zelda games. Um, what else have yeah. we got? We had, I had a little bit of inspiration from Zelda and a little bit of inspiration from Devil May Cry. And I kind of tried to take both combat systems and mix them together, but mm -hmm. not go into too deep into one and the uh, or the other. Cool. So I'm about to choose between an angel sword and a demon sword. Or right, everyone, what should I pick? <laughs> Take both. <laughs> oh my goodness, I've never actually tried that. Can I really you take You never both? tried taking both? Yeah. <laughs> um, no the options right. here, what they, they represent three different story routes. Well, ten, yeah, there's three different ways the story can go. Mm -hmm. um, oh, if you press on the D-pad left and right, you can switch forms and switch swords. Okay. So that was the angel sword, and now this is the demon sword. I can tell by the yes. the little horns, effect horns. <laughs> okay. Am I talking um, to death again? Okay. Yeah, he's a friendly fellow. He won't hurt you much. Sorry for going through the dialogue that fast. I really read that fast. <laughs> it's okay. I always do that when I <laughs> Okay. First test. Uh, so locking on is also holding up a shield. That seems useful. And I can do that? Yeah. Okay. Very, um, a fast-paced type of combat that I was trying to go for, oh but still a little bit technical with the lock-on feature, uh -huh. which will slow you down slightly. The effects are off the chain. <laughs> Thanks. It's... It was my favorite part of making this project, mm -hmm. the effects. Yeah, in addition to the effects, the color palette really works well. And I was a, it really sets the mood of this like dark, magical fantasy. Thanks. Um, the color palette itself is just a range of colors that, starting from purple, because purple is my favorite color, and ending in red, which is another one of my favorite colors, with a little bit of blue on the side. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So that's the end of the demo. I know you had more content, played it in a different build, uh, but I guess you're just giving people a taste for it's the like future a, release, the full release, huh? It's like a teaser. Okay. <laughs> it's like they see um, this little bit, and if they want to see more, they're going to have to, you know, download the demo and play the game. <laughs> okay, we'll put a link to that in the chat if we haven't already on the screen. That's where we follow you on Twitter here, right? Games from Abyss? Yes. All right, cool. Um, well, we do see a question in the chat. What game, what anime did you get inspiration from? So, what anime did I get inspiration oh, from? <laughs> there's, there's a little bit of Naruto. There's a little bit of Bleach. There's a little bit of Jojo. <laughs> there's a little bit of Dragon Ball Z. I can go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can continue in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> Just list them all. All right, thanks for joining us. Very cool. Thanks, Charles. See you later. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye. Cool. So next up, we've got Team Arrow Slider. If you're in the chat, sound off. Or if you're on the call. Yep. Hello. Hey. Hi. Welcome. 
Yo. Loading up the game right now. Mm -hmm. And here we go. So um, you can uh, introduce yourselves all by name and, and then tell us a little bit about the game. I'm Gavin. And I'm Matthew. Okay. I'm Gavin. Nice to meet you. I'm Derek. I'm Gavin. Like so, uh, Arrow Slider is a game that we've been working on for a while now, uh, for, like, the past semester and this semester. Um, it's heavily inspired by Kirby Air Ride's City Trial Mode, in which, uh, you were set in a big open world and you have to take your, like, vehicle around and collect stuff. I just got a guffin. You got a guffin, you did a good job. So there are, are collectibles here, the yellow things that I'm driving around collecting. Um, a guffin is a special purple one, and there's another one. Are there four of them? One for each area? Um, I, I don't actually remember how much I put in okay. each area in this build. Um, this build only has the single player, but uh, the future build will have uh, multiplayer, which will be more about building your machine in power rather than uh, getting collectibles. Right now, this build is more just like a time trial to see how much you can get in a set amount of time. Got it. And that's my timer in the top center, so I got about 60 seconds left. Yep. I'm going to be trying for this ramp. Right. That's the hardest one. Oh, man. Yeah, th that yeah. is the challenge here. It's worth it, though. The view up there is nice. <laughs> Right, get up there. there we go. Oh, one. And so the controls are simple. Um, one button in a sense. I mean, there's left and right for steering, but oh gosh. Um, oh, no. All right. There, I squandered my time limit. I am definitely going to jump right back in there. One second. Um, as I was explaining about the controls, I'll show it. Um, so. We're steering left and right, and there's this one button for jump. But if you hold that one button down, uh, you can first of all break, which lets you make tighter turns. Um, yep. And then when you let go of it, you also still jump. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to use that to do this rapid. Yeah, one of the biggest goals was to have the controls feel fluid, but also be simple enough to understand to the point where anyone could pick up and play. So my character is a bird. Yes, but we're not flying. Yes. Yes. Uh, the, the secret backstory is you are a flightless bird who literally just cannot fly anymore because they're too fat. Right. That's the ramp. That's the construction area. Yep. There's something very endearing about a bird who can't fly. Yes. Oh, yeah, he I can see. fly, so Bitcoin? instead he he finds a hoverboard and says, this is how I fly. This is my favorite guffin. All right. Yeah. <laughs> is there a guffin in the construction area? Because I still haven't found that one. Um, there should There's one at the top of the building, uh, but you're probably course. not going to get that. There's some <laughs> in the blue uh, town. Uh, if you go off the ramps, because you can do that, uh, yeah, you can get on top of the buildings, and you'll be able to possibly get one of those. Here we go. That's the ramp there. Make yeah. a wide I really turn. appreciate, I really appreciate the, the level, how spacious some areas are, and how oh. the spaces are in others. Yeah, the a lot of it is thinking more towards the multiplayer aspect in the future because the more area there is, the more freedom you have to stay away from your opponents or get to certain things before them. Mm -hmm. Cool. So you're working on a multiplayer version uh, or a mode. Um, and as of currently, uh, can people play this online yet or is the demo coming soon? Um, this build is currently up on our itch, 
uh, it's playable in this current state. There's going to be uh, another version later tonight that changes a few assets and makes the game look a little better. Mm-hmm. Like but the, the form, multiplayer version, version will be coming out soon ish, hopefully. Cool, awesome. We'll be looking forward to it. Thanks, everyone, All for right, joining then. the stream. Thanks, team. Thank you. Look out for Arrow Slider. Yep. Thank okay. you for having us. Mm -hmm. Good job, everyone. All right, coming up, um, we've got a glitch in the gears. Loading up the trailer. There it is. Glitching the gears. Welcome to the stream, Olivia. Hi, Olivia. Hi. In case anyone was wondering, we lasted about 10 seconds without someone comparing it to Portal, so that's a good start. <laughs> hey, it's a good thing. Yeah. But this is different and better than Portal, and I guess we're about to find out why. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so let's see. Before we get into it, I saw in that trailer there an April 27th or 29th release date. Yeah, it's already out. All right, um, congrats. Yeah, thank you. We're going to post a link to that in the chat so that you can download and buy the game or just or just try the demo first. Um, we're going to load uh, a saved game because we're not going to start here from the beginning. Um, there are some tutorial levels and early levels and such uh, that I've already beaten, but we're going to show off level three. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about what we're seeing, Olivia? Um, yeah, this is the hub area here. Um, the balls that are around are the are power cells that you get out of the levels. Um, yeah, so in uh, a lot of games like this, like in Mario, you go and you get all the stars and they just power things. In here, you get the stuff, but you have to plug it in yourself. Which is very in the mm -hmm. spirit of the game. I like how this level hub is actually just pretty much another level. Uh, like you got to push the power cells around. We're going to level three, which has already got two power cells in there ready to go. So let's go in there. These controls are um, two analog sticks here. You see the two jets rotating. So it's a little bit like tank controls where, um, you know, both forward goes forward, both back goes back. And to drop down, just crawl into a ball. And for those controls, Olivia, I believe you went through quite a bit of iterating and testing, right? I did. Um, the control scheme came from the robot model. I had the robot model first, but originally with the, the controls, in order to curl up, the biggest change was that you had to hold down both triggers and both bumpers all at the same time, which was a very cool, very tactile kind of a feel. Mm -hmm. But it was also kind of tricky to get people used to. Um, I also later needed the um, one of the bumpers for the uh, grab function. Because so... it's hard to hit buttons with your thumbs when you're <laughs> um, using both sticks to control stuff. Mm -hmm. So this power cell is currently powering this door as you can tell from the blue line, uh, but we're gonna move it off and into this socket to power that door. 
this level in particular is... It's the third level, which makes it technically the last full-blown level. There's a... There's something else after this, but... It's more complicated than most of the levels, obviously, and it's... I like this level a lot. It's It makes you think. I had to it's think. It's not just... Yeah. I had to think it sounded a lot. sounded like you were having trouble the, with it. <laughs> yes, I was. Um, if you like puzzles, this game is going to keep you occupied for a long time. Um, so let's see. That powers that thing there, but the connection is broken. Um, in past levels, we used things like conductive cubes or dodecahedrons to complete connections. Uh, hopefully we can find something like that around, but if the door can't be powered, we'll go through this vent. Well, one way vent. Um, let's see. And there's a shoot here. And feel free um, to direct me if you know where. Can't go through going. there. Got it. So I'm going. You have up. to go up and around. Sorry, it's interesting to see what people do in these levels. Because everyone does something differently, especially in a level that's as open as this one. Also, if you hold down the trigger all the way, the bot will go faster. Oh, okay. It'll stick against the ceiling, but it will go faster. Mm -hmm. Let's see, now I'm down here. For the longest vent on the planet. There you go. And I'm back over here. Okay, so that was the power cell I moved before to get here. Let's see, what if I move it back? No. What if I look over here? That room that you were in before where you wanted to, said you wanted to find something to complete the connection? Mm -hmm. There's two answers to that puzzle, and both are already in the room. I will, I'll give you that much of oh, a hint. Okay. This is one of those conductive cubes, which we can drag around. I'm going to guess it's going to be used to connect those two wires there. Even though I can't power this now, I'll put it there. Uh, so when I found a power cell, I'll put it on that. Let's see. That connects that. Okay. I'll go back to that room you were just talking about before. I also remember um, Olivia, like seeing pages and pages in your notebooks full of like level design sketches. There was a lot of that. And the way I designed levels changed too, because the first time it was just graph paper and sketching, but as time went on, especially for this level, I figured out that it's really hard to make sh to uh, foolproof levels when you're when they're that small. This level I ended up designing with sticky notes and um, dice and little Lego minifigures to <laughs> mark the positions of the balls and the player to and the doors because I had to make sure that you couldn't accidentally, um, not only that you couldn't accidentally beat the level too quickly, but also that you all couldn't um, accidentally get yourself stuck. Mm -hmm had to be pretty foolproof and that was easier to do not just with pen and paper but with toys mm -hmm. got it so i see there's a power cell stuck under the gear there but i can't take it out this giant plug seems like an obvious hint it's easiest if you put the bot in the middle of it and uh -huh. move it around like that okay yeah, it looks like the bot can fit right in. Right. Oh, there we are. Let's see. It's the best way to turn. I usually like to hit the edge of it against the outlet itself, honestly. Or against the corner with the door. Oh, right. Okay. Right. There you go. Perfect. This is one of those things that I wanted to work differently, but didn't like me. 
it All ended right. up causing more problems than it solved. Good enough. <laughs> All right, so that set the gears off. Yay. Let's see. Now we can take this. Where shall we take it? This door is open. That's right there. I like how that was right there. It'll need to go there eventually, but I will say that it that in there if you look in the hole is one of the goal level goals oh you're right so in the end it'll need to go there I should but power something. you'll need it for something else first okay let's although see. that the door that between you and that spot is currently not powered got it okay it'll go through the the red door red door here oh there was a all right all right there was a way to power the red door and the other room Let's see, was it here? I think you'll have to power, figure out the hmm. the broken wire puzzle in the other room first. Okay. Save us all a little time. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about the, the robot that Brian is controlling? Um, what was the inspiration behind its design? Uh, what are its personalities? Um, yeah, glitch. Glitch doesn't really have a personality per se. It's um, it's a little robot. It's kind of cute, and it folds up, and that made me happy when I first designed the thing. There you go. Uh, it honestly, I wanted the originally the, I wanted it to be more complicated on the inside, but um, glitch was one of the first things I ever actually modeled back when I took 3D modeling. It was the final. Uh, mm -hmm. so th the, the robot is actually a lot older than this game. The game kind of came from the robot. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, I have heard a lot of people compare it to a Bakugan, which, <laughs> while not an inspiration I would admit to, isn't entirely wrong. I did see some references in chat. Oh, I wasn't <laughs> watching completely. Ah, uh, yeah. Oops. Just gonna line this up. Um. Oof, almost. It's actually easier to push it on, probably. There we mm. go. There you go. Yay. Okay, so red doors are open. There was a red door over there, but now I have to go through these vents since I can't open the blue door. Mm -hmm. You're figuring this out quicker than most of my playtesters did, actually. Oh, well. Although, Starting those playtesters. Yeah, that's good. Whoops, oh, here it is. Up, up, up. I don't think I could have made the glowing arrow any more obvious. <laughs> um. This level's like a big combination lock, I think. Down all the way. Oh, there you okay. go. I gotta fix my camera. Okay. Mm. The Let's camera see. is a problem. It, it was a problematic thing to figure out for this game. There was a reset especially, button. Huh? Oh, reset position button for the camera? It's it's the there left um, stick, but actually at this point, if you move too far, it'll reset it automatically. Got it. So because I figured out that people were getting the camera in funky positions and not remembering to fix it. Alright, got here. I'm seeing a question in chat that's asking, what does the HP bar correlate to? Um, there's actually nothing that can hurt you in this level in particular, but the in the second level and in the last level in particular, there are um, things that can hurt you. 
particularly the the HP represents your the the battery in the robot, which while it is basically indestructible, uh, the little guy is kind of susceptible to electrical charge surges. Behind you. Hmm. That room you can. Think about where that room that you saw through the glass is in relationship to the rest of the rooms. Well, I saw that it was behind the glass here. Yeah, and so you're in... It's a 3x3 three three grid of rooms. Oh, okay. Kind of like that 3x3 so, three three cube. Yeah. <laughs> so that room on the other side of the glass now mm -hmm. is oh, where that's you the came entrance. in from. Yeah. Um... And that was a blue door. Oh, blue's open now, isn't it? Yellow's not open. Was there a vent I could go through? Yes. Okay. There's a way around that. You're so close. You're so very, very close. Let's see. Where was the vent? Here. How close are we to finishing the level? We might not actually have time. Uh, not very far, but it, I I wouldn't be upset if you if we've eaten up all our time. Okay, let's see. Let's see if I can you... get through one more door at least. You have to push, you have to get through the door, do something on the other side of it quickly, and then go plug the balls in, basically. Got it. But, we've, I've, this has eaten up a lot of time already. I'm aware of that. Let's see the door. Is it here? Oh, there it Straight is. Straight through there. Alright, we're just going to give people at home a taste <laughs> of what puzzles are to come. Dodecahedrons that you can move around. Possibly place on the switches. That's possibly a switch. That's a switch. Who knows? I guess people <laughs> at home around. will have to download the demo. Maybe buy the game if you like it. Um, yeah. But for now, we'll have to move on to the next game. Thanks for showing this to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So Thanks, check the game out, and I hope you enjoy it and don't get too frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for joining us. All right, next up, we've got Subject 54. Uh, Derek, are you in the call? Uh, yes, I am. Hi, cool. Derek. How's it going? <laughs> I'm Ryan. Hi, DJ. Uh, we are going to load up the game and play the trailer in the meantime. And here we go. I'm just going to jump in and start playing. Why don't you tell us all what it's about? Oh, okay.
Mm-hmm. Oh, it happens. Mm -hmm. So my bar on the left is completely full. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, I've... I think I think that's as loud as I can go. <laughs> How's this? Can you guys hear me? Hello? Uh uh. Hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave and then join back. there with us for a minute oh it looks like we were able to hear hello Eric. hey oh you guys okay. can hear me finally we got so, audio we may have missed some of what you said about the game though oh so <laughs> <laughs> it's okay let's talk about hello. time because time is such an important part of this game uh, yes that there's an ability to freeze time you were telling us about when the bar on the left becomes full yes yeah, so when the bar on the left becomes full you would Hit the right, you would right click to stop time. And the the cool part about that is um, when you do end up stopping time, your bullets that you shoot out will stop before it reaches the um, the enemy. I mean it's I think I think it's like a pretty cool pretty cool like effect. Mm -hmm. Um so Time to me is like one of these like things that can't really be explained. So I wanted to kind of create a game about it that will kind of test the one, test the Unity engine, and two, test the theory of time. I see that so, time comes through in the aesthetic as well as if people can notice that it's changing between night and day continuously, and that we see that in the sky and the shadows. Yeah, um, and also those yellow little orbs flying around those are supposed to be fireflies <laughs> it's like in a world of such chaos and endless battle you know it's nice to kind of look at your environment <laughs> even though you don't have enough time to do so uh -huh. but uh like for example i think now if you have like a whole bunch of like enemies wait wait until wave four you can right click and then show everyone okay you can show everyone what's going on with that but uh, um yeah, uh, it's like in a world of endless battle, it's nice to at least have some type of aesthetic pleasure, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a lot. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's some nice trees and uh, ocean out there. But <laughs> hold on, I'm getting shot at. Um, there's like this tension, a lot of tension because it's survival. There's shooting, I can slow it on time, but there's no cover. Um, and I'm also always running out of ammo. Oh gosh, this is bad. Corners are bad. Corners are always bad <laughs> in all games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, things do become more and more hectic. So this so... is that frozen time right now. Yeah. And now we're back. So when you when you do see there's a little bit of a transition. So even with the fireballs that you're shooting out, it still will stop before it reaches the enemy. Mm -hmm. Each enemy has like a specific um hitbox near them that will stop all incoming i guess like objects mm -hmm. oh and you will <laughs> you, you you do have the ability of dying <laughs> that will yes. happen a lot 
Uh, so... <laughs> yeah, so it's it's more of a... It's more of a survive until you... Until you don't. <laughs> mm -hmm. So... I was about to ask if people can play this at home, but first there's a vending machine here, right? Um, yes. Can you get health or are you spending health here? Um, with the points that you acquired during... With the points that you acquired during, I guess, your tenure <laughs> of being alive, <laughs> during your livelihood, like you'll see in the top right, your score, uh, you're able to buy health if you have enough score. Now, if you don't have enough score, God help you. Um, <laughs> uh, also, every time you buy like health, you have to be careful because you that the I guess the price of health does increase. The price of health increase every time you buy health, so you have to be extremely careful when buying health. <laughs> I think it increases like one thousand more score. Oh yeah, you can run with shift. By the way. <laughs> oh okay. You, you are able to get out of the way with shift. Did you press on the shift key? That's a tip um, for people at home. Um, so people can <laughs> download this, right? Uh, did we post that link into chat? Uh, yeah. It is in chat. Yeah, it's on itch right now. It is currently free. Uh, when I start putting in other guns and I mm -hmm. guess make it into a local co-op, I will then put a price tag on it. <laughs> um, but make sure you know you have a chance you, you like you know definitely play it at home perfect thanks thank for joining you for us time. thanks <laughs> no problem thank you so much all right happy capstone guys yeah congrats <laughs> all right everyone next up we've got reality break Reality break. If you're on the call, hello. say hello and introduce yourselves. Hello, good evening. My name is Frank Marinelli. I am joined by my teammate. Andy Hilaire. <laughs> How's and everyone Jason. doing tonight? Yep, and I'm Jason Sorio. Hi, Frank, Andy, and Jason. Now, before we begin, we are unfortunately down one teammate, Abanoob, who cannot make it because his uh, router died and you cannot get a new one right now all right we've got some creepy audio here this is definitely a horror game of some sort let's go oh yeah reality break is a horror walking simulator where you traverse a dense forest trying to collect fragments of your past while escaping an eerie force that's haunted the woods so we're and collecting memory in... fragments oh yeah and you're in i i a, a quite a blue forest. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like the blue. So here's the first memory fragment. I need that. This is a puzzle piece piecing together your memory. <laughs> Don't forget you can run with shift. Oh yeah, okay. I'm gonna feel that. too scared. Let's not forget about our good old boy Cletus behind you there. That's not a memory fragment. Oh, no, no that, that, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's Cletus. You know, friendly old Cletus from down the block. He's just wondering why you're why you're in the woods, you know? Uh-huh. I hope you all can hear this audio. That is really creepy. What were, um, can you tell us about, oh gosh, it's getting closer. Can you tell us about some of your goals that you were setting out uh, to do when you were making this? Yeah, sure. Um, originally, this was going to be a solo endeavor, and I was going to try and make it as much of a unique horror experience as I possibly could, trying to differentiate from a lot of the horror titles that, out there right now, they'll maybe rely a little bit too much on jump scares, maybe rely not enough on atmosphere to scare you. Um, so I wanted to make, I wanted to try and make a game that would change every time you play it. It would be the same thing twice, and uh, that was a bit out of range for me at the time. So we scaled back and decided to just focus on having enough monsters to where you know it, it's different and you have to try and survive for as long as you can while you're being harassed by things that are not quite so friendly so there's this monster that everyone's seen uh what everyone might not realize is that there's an invisible monster that i can only tell the status of from from uh my uh the thing the indicator on the screen right 
Yeah, there is a monster that you cannot see, but it can definitely see you, and it follows you all around. And it's designed to obscure your vision and stop you from running, so the other monster can catch up and try and uh, try and get you. Right, and I can explain that monster a little bit more. So that invisible monster, uh, every time it sees you, it will create that obscured vision. So like. If you're hiding behind an obstacle, it might make the make your vision a little bit less obscure. Got it. So we've got um, some story bits here. Yeah, that's the uh, we we added this little story to the game. It's on the uh, the main menu, but I think the people at home would rather just find that one out for themselves. The, the main story, at least. All right then. Uh... Can people get this online? Download yes, it? you can. You can get it right now on itch.io for Windows, Linux, and Mac. We, uh, I, I released it yesterday. I just felt like the game was done as it is and released it. All right, congrats. Very cool. Well, thank you. Thanks, Thanks for joining Steve. us. Thanks so much. Thanks yeah. for having us. Everyone, enjoy your capstone night. Can't wait to see what else there is. All right. So. On that note, what's up next is Super Block Hunter. Team, if you're there, come on and say hello. Yo, it's Dave. I don't know where my team is right now. I give me one second. <laughs> hey, Dave. Hey, Brian. I just want to tell you, you have a nice radio voice. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Um, they can. It's so right. thing, thing. <laughs> yeah, I could just start. Yeah. Yeah, they'll they'll join in uh, when available. Reminder to everyone at home: this is like over twenty people all calling in from different locations, all at different times. This is uh, this is quite an operation. Okay, Super Block <laughs> Hunter, jumping right into it. Oops, looks okay. like my controls are locked. I've got my gamepad on. All right, tell us about what's going on on the screen. So, Super Block Hunter is a wave-based shooter about a square block named Block Boy. So, initially, he's the last square of his race. He got killed off by different uh, ra uh, races of uh, shapes. And so now he's just out for revenge and like and right now this is like a like a demo prototype because the game is not finished so everything in the game is just placeholders for uh when the game is actually like complete coding wise mm -hmm. and then i'll worry about the art so i started so, off uh, with a, a bow and now i've got a different one so oh uh, there are like six different types of bowls right now i just put like placeholder bowls to see uh like how it will work out so there's a fire bowl a poison bow uh a faster shooting bow a triple bow and a ice bow so like they spawn in a radius around uh, around the map and like a square block not too big but like in the a medium sized range and only like a set amount is a uh, able to spawn at a time so there's only five bows in the map currently and then when you pick up one another one spawns mm -hmm. and this is one that lets me shoot really fast um so we've got sort of a score counter up top and each time i hit that score uh a new round appears and then the next round gets longer to reach to right yeah so we're like so ahead. then like go ahead so like what my intentions is with that like each round it will get harder and then like kind of like in a uh, box head then like there's a chance for another type of enemy type to come in and uh like make it more difficult i want the game to be like fast paced like enemies coming at you so right now like they're pretty slow mm -hmm. just to test it out so you can uh, be able to play it and actually just go through the levels and there, there were it was supposed to be another enemy type but that one is like buggy right now too so mm -hmm. this is a lot of bug fixes that I've been dealing with for the like the last few weeks. Uh huh. It'll be in a future build. Yeah, bug fixes are are crazy. You build something and then you got to fix something and then you build something again. You got to fix it again. Uh, would you say 
what were some of the challenges that, or some of the things you learned when you were making this? Uh, some of the things I learned. Or just what I was like, say, the challenges or the hardest parts of it? If if something is not working, just move on to the next thing and not worry about one thing too long, because then you get kind of stuck and you're not like progressing and you're uh, building the game. Uh -huh. So I had to just learn to like come back to things that were like giving me more problems than the other, just to, so the game can like start feeling complete or like close and near complete. Mm -hmm. That's really good advice. You can get stuck on something for too long. Um, I'm about to hit 2,500. Yeah, I think Block Boy, right. Block Boy is the only like fully animation, yeah, animated a uh, character right now in the game. Mm -hmm. Looks like we got eight directional movement, eight direction uh, yeah. on the sprite. Yeah, getting that was a hassle too because like you shoot with the right stick so that his body upper body moves when you mm -hmm. when you aim so it's the animation and then you can move with the left stick so you're not just facing the way you're shooting i didn't want it to be like that that traditional up down like where you move with the stick and it shoots that way i wanted to have freedom so like blending the controls and coding for that was like a, a hassle mm -hmm. all right i just got hit and lost my progress um such as the archaic style of game. Oh, no. Beat as many waves as you can until you lose it all. But uh, yeah. thanks for joining us on the stream. Uh, oh, this game right. will be coming oh, out right. later in the year. Is that correct? Or updates? Yeah, updates my, my, my goal is to, to try to work on it throughout the summer and see yeah, how far I can get. I, I mean, if I, I if I get take a like into it, like even more than I like it now, then I'll probably like hold off and try to actually work on it to make it decent. Mm -hmm. yeah, it looks like Jeremy, I mean, it was here, but Jeremy is yeah. here. Yeah, they're like, John, I just saw. He wanted to say <laughs> hi to you. Hey guys, my bad, <laughs> I joined a little late. Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, so, well, thanks everyone for uh, joining us and showing us the game. Um, congrats on completing Capstone, and we are going to move on to the next project. Thank you, team. See you all later. Um, so up next, we're going to look at Trident. Um, and we're going to start that off by showing the trailer. Uh, right, the trailer is not playing yet. Give me a moment here. Okay, here we go. We got a trailer. <laughs> That's the Trident trailer. We are going to load up the game now.
And while we're loading, if you could introduce yourself and say hello, tell us a little bit about what the game is. Why, hello, everybody. Uh, it is I, uh, Jeffrey Chester, uh, also known as Silas Valentine, as you see. Um, and this is my game, Trident. Hello. Um, yeah. All right, we're on the screen here. Yep. So, uh, this is Trident. It is a single player, uh, third person adventure game uh, about this monstrous sea captain with a magical trident. Uh, was gone to uh, this kind of island, to this mystical lighthouse, to uh, help them of their curse, that is, turn them into this kind of creature from the Black Lagoon-esque monster. Cool. We got full cutscenes. Okay, we're here. Um, WASD... Left mouse, basic attack. Right mouse to aim your trident and throw it by releasing. We can return it, right, by pressing left click. And then if your trident hits wood, you can press mouse two to teleport. That's kind of a special mechanic here. So I throw the trident there, press mouse two and teleport. So, that's going to be pretty key to how the levels work coming up. Um, a lot of animation. I think it's worth noting that you're a double major, right? Yes, I am also a 3D animation major. And this project is supposed to encumber both of those majors into one capstone. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, um, yeah, I think I did that pretty well. Yeah, we're seeing quite a bit of animated transitions, animated cutscenes, a whole trailer. Um, we just picked up a diary log here. Uh, this is how some of the story is going to be told. It's been three months wavering through the storm. This has been my most challenging venture by far, but I will not be deterred. I will no longer go back to the coast. My life is the sea. Captain Christine Devar. All right. So you can find those throughout uh, the levels, and they're going to unveil just kind of more of the lore and more of the story of the game. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to do that teleporting, throw the trident, teleport to the trident. Oops. No, that's pretty far. OK, here we go. Right click, teleport. More diary logs. Uh, baddies, throw the trident again. Teleport. Now this is a switch, I think. OK, bridge appeared. Yep. And we're going to that lighthouse. Yep. Uh, Gotta be. Yeah, the lighthouse is like a visual thing just for the end of each level. Uh huh. Something that's all. We're definitely going to it. Yo, Charles just said uh, the throne's better than Kratos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout out to Charles. Ooh. Did I literally leave my trident all the way back there? Oh. Okay, that's okay. Ooh, okay. We can teleport. It's okay. Oh, that's on the edge. Uh, that might be a little too close. Oh, yeah, that was also on the edge. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. Uh, I didn't need to return that. It's a little bit of a learning curve, but if you get this right, you could probably just totally speed run this game by teleporting around pretty good. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna do another throw. I'm gonna aim a little 
higher than it. Okay, that's good. All right, is there uh, any bit of the, the lore or the backstory that maybe you could uh, fill us in on? Okay, yeah, so uh, this is Christine. Uh, she is uh, uh, this monster sea captain that is has been uh, cursed, and they need to go to this mystical, uh, uh, mystical lighthouse to find a cure for this curse. Mm -hmm. Um... There's going to be more story throughout uh, the game as you collect the diary logs, and there's some of that that maybe might go outside the game. Uh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. And what is this? Uh, I don't know what's going on right now. Uh, Oof, I might be stuck in place. That's never happened before. Um, Okay. Huh. It happens. That's okay. Oops, should have went into level select. Oh wait, I didn't beat the first level yet, did I? Uh, that it's the level select should still work, but. <laughs> okay. What was making these cutscenes like? A lot of planning, a lot of storyboarding, keyframing. Oops. We'll try that level select. Are you still on the call? Oh, sorry. Yeah, so, uh... There we go. Level select works. <laughs> That's a good test for it. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, all these cutscenes uh, go in and went in to the animation side of the capstone. So anything in Tame in that class went into these cutscenes. So a lot of storyboarding, a little planning. Uh, everything in the cut. Well, everything in the game was animated in Maya and then imported into Unity. But, yeah. Cool. And then textured with Substance Painter, which is funny because to get this uh, PlayStation 1 kind of effect, I had to uh, switch uh, the, uh, I had to lower the resolution of every texture. So I was get these really good textures and I had to make them look bad <laughs> mm -hmm. just for the aesthetic. <laughs> Yeah, it's a pretty distinctive look, like that pattern all the way in the far background of the, the skybox and the, the walls and stuff. Let's see here. Attach onto that piece of wood, then teleport. I guess I'm sort of charged with these particles when I've got a successful lock, right? Yep. Great. <laughs> Get some health back. Okay. And I think this part of the level, I kind of experimented with uh, multiple paths the player could take. Uh, because there's a lower option on like a high ground. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. That's a dead end. I'm going there. Oops. Press too many things at once. Uh, that could just just move around. That usually uh, shouldn't be happening. <laughs> I'm in place. Are you stuck in place? Uh-huh. Well, these things can happen. Um, I really wanted to show you all the, the next level's cutscenes, but we might have to call it here.
um, but people luckily can get it online. Um, and that link will be shared in the chat if it hasn't been already. Oh, yeah, you can uh, go get the game at itch.io slash uh, solve that and find out itch.io slash trident. Cool. All right, thanks for joining us. Very cool, thank you. Thank you. See you later. All right. Next up, we've got Ricochet. And we will start that off with a trailer. Joining us on the call, the developer of Ricochet. Hey. Hey. Alex. hey. How's it going? Introduce yourself and let us know what the game's about. Okay. So my name is Alexander Matos. Um, I was this game was mainly more, more of a portfolio piece to help me learn programming, but I guess I during making during development of it, I kind of learned. I make my own sprites, I don't import them, some sound design. So, yeah. So, the reason why I kind of made this game was um, I, I think the, I was trying to do something really simple because I was kind of like ex, uh, not well experienced. But um, one type of game that did came to mind was um, the game Space Cadet from like. Um, Windows 98 computers, and I was thinking like, oh, I, um, I was thinking like I can try and make that since I enjoyed that game when I was young, and also I uh, kind of probably have something that that something that I never did before, because I'm like million. I, so far, the only games I've been making were like platformers and like mm -hmm. FPS type games that. This is the uh, script from the asset store, so so I kind of had to like it was learn how to rotate this two uh, D sprites of the flippers. Also, uh, it also taught me uh, how to use getter and setters thanks to uh, Derek, who uh, made subject fifty. 54. Uh, subject fifty four. Subject fifty four. Cool. Yeah, so, he uh, he was a he was a tutor, at, and he helped me to like use getters and setters, and also Mr. Fly also kind of like help help me have a better understanding of how to use them. That's so, for so uh, I wanted to say thanks. So um, I also yeah, I kind of learned a, a lot around here. I also had to like uh, learn how to make my own. And again, my own audio and sprite, so that was kind of that was that was kind of enjoyable, but it was kind of time consuming, especially for the sprites. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a little, oh, sorry. You went out here to combine um, pinball with like breakout, right? You wanted to yeah. Combine two games. Um, and tell us a little bit more about some of the mechanics that are going on here. So there's a 3X and a B-A-L-L -L up there. Sorry, can I say that again? There's the, the 3X and the ball, which actually just triggered right now. Oh. Yeah, that's the that's what I use the getters and setters on. Mm -hmm. So basically what it's supposed to do was you had to have all of them activated, and they're activated when you um uh, when a ball passes through them and it turns all light blue. And once that, once all that, is, once all of them are activated, it activates multi-ball. However, when if you go through a one that's already been activated, 
that one will switch off. Right. So, so you basically got to like aim it carefully. So. Mm -hmm. And now I see they're active again. Yeah. One thing that I was more focusing on was trying to get the physics to work. Because one of the things that I did some research on pinball was that um, in pinball, the way um, the way you aim it is by uh, hitting the ball, the focus on the on a certain section of it sorry um uh -huh. so you have to launch the ball on a certain section of the flipper so if you uh, hit it on the edge of the flipper it'll go on go to the far left or right direction depending which one you use or if you hit cl close to where the um where the hinge is it will hit uh to the it'll hit it back it'll hit it back so Cool. Let me see so I want to look at your page here. Uh, so this is online. Um, yeah, and so people can play this online. This is a WebGL build. Um, and uh, yeah, it sounds like you, you did a lot of uh, a lot of research and that uh, you used this game sort of to explore that research. Um, and yeah, just wanted to say good job on that. OK. Um, Thank you. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, one thing I do want to say is that uh -huh. since learning how to uh, do all this, how to like uh, rotate the flippers, the bumpers, all that, all that stuff, I was thinking like maybe uh, make a better version of this game later on. Not not like the same type of not not the same game, but more like uh, was. Not like a sequel, but I guess like a better version of pinball. Because mm -hmm. um, it's it's really simple, but I want to like use this to like teach me how to program properly and how to like how to design games on Unity. So once I get more experience, I might well go back to, go back on this project and probably make it better. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, Looking forward to. Yeah. Well done. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks Thank for joining. You. All right. So next up, we've got Team Hammerhead. <laughs> and we are coming up. Um, we're in the home stretch here. So we've got, let's see, we've got Hammerhead and then we've got Growing Up, and that rounds out the group. So let's see. Is Team Hammerhead on the call? Hello. All right, cool. We're going to start things off with your trailer. Get the game on the screen. And here we go, loading up. So go ahead and introduce yourselves by name and tell us a little bit about the project. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kiwi Brandon, and, and I'm joined by my teammates. Hello, this is Barrington Scott, and I was basically the lead artist and animator, and I helped with some programming. Hi, my name is Tavian Barnes. I was the lead programmer and uh, bug fixer for the game. And um, I was uh, the project manager for the game, as well as a, a flex level designer, programmer, uh, as well as like the concept writer for the game. Cool. Uh, so tell us a little bit about the concept. And uh... Uh, so. Uh, yeah, so uh, Hammerhead is a 2D side scrolling endless runner where the player uh, controls a construction robot with a hammer shaped head. 
uh, but he becomes self-aware and he like breaks out of his uh, normal building programming and he wrecks havoc. Uh, Rex, yeah, Rex Havoc through uh, the working facility using his uh, hammer shaped head and um, just traverses through an infinitely generated environment. Game over. Got to the second environment there. Let me. Uh, so now there's multiple modes of the game. I just entered the other mode. There was um, uh, the first mode that I played, and now there's this endless mode, right? Yes, so the demo mode is basically like a tutorial for the player to mess around with the game, get a feel for uh, the mechanics, and just uh, come in contact with all the enemies and obstacles that we have planned out for the game. And the endless mode is the uh, main mode that we have where they can actually play uh, uh, the Epic Runner uh, style of the game. Uh, people at home might notice the, the UI here is very reminiscent of a mobile game, right, with the pause in the top left and the buttons on the lower right and the lower left. Um, do you want to tell us about that? Game over. Uh, sure. Uh, we uh, made this game with a mo mo mobile platform in mind, uh, mainly for Android, because those are the type of phones that uh, we all have. Uh, me, Victorian, and Barrington. So uh, the ideal gaming experience that we designed it for is for mobile, and that's how we have the buttons down on the bottom half of the game, where you can uh, control the game via thumbs. And um, if you were to play this um, on desktop, if you have like a touch compatible computer, that would work as well if you would touch on the buttons. Cool. We, um, we... Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to explain that uh, we also designed the game for iOS as well, but uh, we're still kind of trying to fix some of the issues we found in the iOS version, so that should be up shortly. Got it. And now that Android version is online, I'm playing it here on the web preview because I couldn't stream from my phone, um, but that Android version is online for free um, as a downloadable APK. Correct. Yes. That link we'll put in the chat if it's not there already. I'm on the edge here. Uh, how was developing for mobile? Um, I'm sure that presented some unique challenges. Uh, what were some of the hardest things? Uh, mainly just formatting uh, the game uh, for mobile. Uh, with, uh, with mobile in mind, just making sure none of the assets are too big, and just uh, you have to frequently uh, build out the game so we can actually play it on mobile and see what things we did right, see what things we did wrong, and go back to the drawing for it. Along with that, uh, oh, sorry, Kate, but you were still talking? So you can go ahead. Okay, I was just going to uh, say uh, another problem we were having before was uh, scaling the UI depending on the phone you have, as well as um, we were working on um, impl implementing uh, swipe controls. Like in the game right now, you could also swipe up on the screen to jump as well. And uh, the main issue was trying to uh, get the infinite mode to spawn platforms enemies quick. Oh, I was on a good run there. Nice right. score. So here. Um, thanks for showing us this game. Uh, reminder everyone that you can download that APK. All you have to do is download it to your Android phone and try to open the file. It should just prompt you to install it, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Thank you for playing. All right, thanks for showing us. Thank you, everyone. That's on the job. Um, next up, we are gonna see the next game, which is also our last game for the night, I believe. Growing up. If the growing up team is in the call, please say hello. Hello, hello, can you hear me? Hey, Carl. Hey, how you doing? Doing good. Is Jin joining us? Um, I 
don't believe he will be joining us. Okay, that's no problem. Mm -hmm. um, so let's see here. We, we are loading up this game. Mm -hmm. As soon as I find it and open it. <laughs> no problem. Take your time. Okay, I think it is currently loading. Do you want to uh, start off with just a brief of what the game is? Yeah, sure. Uh, so Growing Up is a narrative-driven walking simulator that places you inside of a black and white world. And it's when you explore the environment uh, that the world becomes more saturated in color. Um, and going off of that, the game relies on color as a storytelling device and the main mechanic. Um, and in the game, you have the ability to inspect objects. Um, some objects um, negatively change color, while others do the opposite. Um, the game is pretty short, um, and it's meant to be played in one sitting. Uh, so you can actually choose to finish it in a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes if uh, you want to explore everything. All right, so like the genre, um, it's like a, a walking simulator. We're exploring a house, and <laughs> as you mentioned, we can just rush through it, but that's not the point of this type of experience. We want to look around, yeah, exactly. um, mm -hmm. and as you mentioned, this is a black and white world. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see what's in here. And so for the story, this character um, is supposed to be someone who is kind of like in a perpetual cycle. Um, so when we grow older, hence the name growing up, um, we become these people um, that we want to be, or rather people um, that tell us we want to be. And no matter how much we change, there are always parts of us that kind of stay the same. And so uh, you remember these parts of yourself by going through the environment. Mm -hmm. So some of those objects were color, like the cereal and the bowl, um, that tablet or the phone is jumping out of my eye. And so we're looking for these objects of color, right? That's correct. And they've had some thoughts. Should I have really left here? And it's press E to remember. Now, you may not have heard it, but um, there are certain points when you um, inspect these objects where you can actually hear a voicemail from a friend. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn the volume up, make sure people hear this uh, this sound design here. Okay, there we go. So you could pick up objects and examine them. There are certain things that don't have that kind of same quality. They're not colored, they don't spark memories, mm -hmm. like this one right here. So, yeah, so these objects that you see that are actually in color are meant to um, attract the player um, because without it, um, through a lot of testing, uh, players didn't really figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. And so I made that easier for them to figure out. Cool. Maybe I should draw again. Brush. So the room, the entire room is getting more colorful. Mm -hmm. And that's... And um, mm -hmm, go ahead. Oh, yeah, that's just, again, the whole remembering that part of you that you once forgot. So it's kind of what, like in a way you're regaining your creativity, mm -hmm. forgetting or remembering who you once were. Very cool. Let's see, are there any other objects I should examine in here? Um, maybe I'll go to the next room. Out here, there's a bedroom here. 
Um, I guess since Jin isn't able to join us on the call, do you want to talk a, a bit about Jin's work a little bit? Oh, yeah, of course. Um, so Jin worked on the 3D modeling of the game. So everything you see in here is actually done by him, um, besides like a couple of objects. Um, so the tables, the furniture, everything is designed by him. Um, he did a lot of work, uh, especially with like using these map, uh, wrapping and unwrapping. And he did such an amazing job. I'm so happy that he actually came onto the project. Um, at first this was going to be a solo um, project. Um, so realizing that, that's why I made it, the game so small. Um, knowing what I had already known, especially with programming, I knew that I needed a lot of work. Um, and a lot of time to learn the things that I had to learn. Um, but it was a steep process, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I'm happy it came out the way that it did. Um, Jin's also happy as well. But yeah, again, uh, I know he's not here, but uh, thanks to him for making everything. He was awesome. Cool. Yeah, you guys were, um, you guys were a good team. So I'm going to go to bed here and, um, and yeah, that's growing up. Thanks for sharing that with us. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Very, very moody, uh, evocative piece. Thanks. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's see here. Um, Moving on, what is up next? We are going back to this screen. Um, and that's it. That's all of the games that we had to show you tonight. There were a few projects that unfortunately couldn't make it uh, to the stream tonight. So um, shout outs to Ozone by Carlo Ocasio, uh, Warp Point by Isaac uh, um, or Ishmael uh, and Asylum Break by Lorenzo and Wrath of Nature by Isaac. Uh, but if you're in the chat, say hello, but otherwise, you know, catch you on the VOD. Um, the links to those projects as well as all the other projects, as well as the artist statements, uh, some more words from the developers about how or why they made what they did make are linked in the chat. Um, yep, check out the 2020 Capstone booklet to read all the project's artist statements. Uh, a lot more insights about what everybody did there. And congrats to everybody. Uh, that was uh, that was a good showing. Uh, normally we do a, a showcase event where we're all getting together in the same place and, and showing each other our work. Uh, Unfortunately, we couldn't do that for obvious reasons, but we're glad that we were able to all get together virtually like this. Uh, GJ, are you here on the call? I'm here. Hey, uh, anything um, you want to say to everyone? Yeah, I wanted to thank everyone for joining us this evening. We have a, a mix of friends, family, current students, alumni, accepted students in the BC community. I think I saw some cat professors, uh, President Evans um, in chat. We're so happy that you were uh, here to join us. Um, and to our class of 2020, uh, totally acknowledge that this was a tough year and you've accomplished so much. Uh, please sit, stay in touch, uh, send me your friend codes. Um, we're very, very proud of who you are. Um, and congratulations to you all. Thank you all so much. We did it. <laughs> Congrats, everybody. And that concludes our stream. Uh, good job. Yeah. And take some well-deserved rest. Spend time with your friends and family as you can. Oh, and thank you, Brian, for leading the stream. Oh, hey, it was my pleasure. It was your idea. It was. So, <laughs> props. <laughs> A lot of good messages in the chat. We're going to miss yeah. you all, too, but you know, we will definitely see each other again. Stay in touch and have a good night. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone.